Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the latest AF Digital Masterclass. All right. So let's get started. I won't stretch this any longer because we have a very interesting, very informative second session of our The Perdot Essentials. Um, now for this session, as you can see on your screen right now, we are going to have a deep dive with Perdot. Still presenting this um, this masterclass, our AF Digital's own Perdot Masters. I have here with me in this session, Kate, who is our business analyst, and Kevin, our Salesforce developer. Also in this masterclass is Seek, our business analyst as well, um, but he will be conducting the third session. Speaking of the sessions, last week, Kate and I started with session number one of the Perdot Essentials, wherein we introduced you into, um, into the, this B2B marketing tool um, and we discussed everything that you need to know when you're getting started with Perdot. Now we're in session two, we're deep diving into the Perdot components, what you can do in Perdot um, and it's going to be a really informative one hour session. Next week, like I said, Zeke will be conducting the last session of the Perdot Essentials, Automate Your Marketing Programs. So if you have colleagues who you think will benefit from this masterclass, feel free to share this session with them. Um, like I said, it's going to be very jam-packed today. I know for a fact that Kate and Kevin had a difficult time squeezing everything in into this one our session so we do appreciate if you can give us feedback after this session as to what else you need from af digital's master classes in the future or if you have any questions feel free to type it in the question box um, and we will address them at the end of the session so let me turn you over now to kate for the agenda and for her to get started with this session afternoon everyone and I'm Kate and I'm the AF Digital's business analyst and you can uh, you can also consider me as like an email specialist expert so for our agenda today we are going to teach you how to create a list build an email template form and form handlers and um, how to set up landing pages and custom redirect for the first two agendas I am the one who's gonna discuss those. And for the uh, three, four, five agendas, that would be discussed by Kevin. So let's get started. So for our first section, um, we're gonna discuss how to create a list. So for this section, our learning objectives would be identify what is a list, be able to differentiate what are the type of lists inside of Pardot. And um, we're gonna also teach you how to build your list in a few simple steps. List. Once you have prospects um, in your Pardot database, you can actually segment them into a prospect list based on the criteria that you set. Prospect lists are like basically the buckets that you can use to group a certain prospects together. And they are mainly helpful to make sure you're marketing to the correct group of people. And what are the examples of lists that you can create inside your Pardot? You can create a list that includes the, all the prospects that you wanna send out your monthly newspaper newsletter. It could be a list of a prospects who just recently downloaded your ebook, or it could also be a list that you use for your internal testing. So you've got a lot of ideas um, of the uses that you can do with the list. Shade static between dynamic list because there are actually two main types of lists that you can create in Pardot. So static lists are a stagnant list. They do not ever change unless, of course, you update them manually in your Pardot or like with an automation rule or a completion rule. 
while dynamic lists, dynamic lists are like smart lists that automatically add or remove prospects based on the criteria that you've set up. They're easy to set up and they're easy to maintain themselves because um, it also makes them a great choice for building lists around information that actually changes frequently. So now that we've identified the difference between a static list and dynamic list, let me show you a step-by-step -step process of creating a list. Here you can see the Pardot application. So in the, in the Pardot application, there are tabs right here. On the top side of the application, click the segmentation segmentation list and then you go ahead and so you click all information fill them out and name and folder are only the third fields that you have to fill out so you just uh, name the list that you wanted and it's always a good idea to use a naming convention. You select uh, a folder that you wanted them to like store. You, you choose a tag, but that's also optional. So in here, you can see that there are other options that you can um, submit. It. So if you want to create a dynamic list, then you have to select this. Otherwise, if it's just a static list, then you have to leave this and select it. You choose this part, the email list uh, test list, if you wanted to use your test list exclusively for internal tests. And then um, when it comes with this one, with this part, you pick an archive date if you want to make your list um, inactive at some point in the future. And archiving lists move them to the archive list on the list table under segmentation. Um, for the public list, um, this one, you select public list to make the list available in the email preference center. For the CRM visible, if you have a verified CRM connector, you can optionally enable the CRM visible option to allow prospects to add to or remove this list from your CRM. And once you finish filling out all the information that you wanted on your list, you can go ahead and just click create list. And after you created the list, you can then add the prospects inside your list. And that is just how simple it is to create a list in your product application. Now is we'll discuss the building an email template. This section, um, our goal is to describe what is Pardot's permission-based policy, be able to differentiate what is email template and what is a list emails. I'm gonna show you how to create an email template and how you can add your own personalization to your template and also share you some of our um, email template creation best practices. Before we show you how to build your own email template in Pardot, of course, it's important that we review first the can spam law and how Pardot's own permission-based rule fits into that. So just a um, few review of the can spam permissions and cookies are the can Did you notice anything missing to this so permissions in sending email of course now is nowhere to be found and this so this is where um pardot's permission based policy comes in um their policy states that the prospects have to give you consent they have to opt in first for you to email them or send them anything pardot also prohibits users from purchasing email lists and sending spam emails through their platforms. With these regulations in mind, then we'll be able to avoid um, 
right, um, violating any rules. And with that, let's go ahead with differentiating an um, email template versus a list email. So what is the difference? So with email template, it's as simple as it is reusable, it is repeatable, and um, if you're planning to use your email in an automation um, program, for example, as a autoresponder emails, or like if you want to use your email template or your email in a engagement program, then what you need to do or what you need to create is an email template. So list email is just use, uh, you use that for just a one-off sending. You can actually copy it, you can edit it, but it's, you can't reuse it. So that is, those are the main differences between email template and list email. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, the anatomy of an email template. And these are the sections that you should uh, include in your template. These are the sections that usually um, included inside your template when you create one. So the first one would be the header graphic, which includes your company logo. It includes your branding, your own branding. Next is your main content or your copy. And here is where you place the main thrust of your email. You add links and content. Uh, you add your images, whatever you prefer. And then next is the CDA or the call to action. And um, it tells people what they're going to get, not what they're going to do. So it's one of the most important content in your email. Um, it's best practice to make sure that you feature your CDA at the top of your email so, so that recipients don't overlook it. The fourth section would be the social icons or the social sharing. With the social icons, you can include um, an icon of your Facebook or your Instagram. If, or if you have a YouTube, you can add them there. Um, for the social sharing, Pardot actually builds social sharing into the email template editor with the add this um, connector. You can easily drop these into your template so recipients can forward and share with their network easily. So the fifth section would be the physical mailing address and the subscription preference. And it is required by Pardot for the can spam compliance. through all those sections and elements and creating an email template, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process of how to create an email template. So the first thing you'll notice, um, those are the tabs available inside your Pardot application. And then or add email template. To click that, all this basic template information will prompt and you have to fill out all those required fields or information such as name, the folder, the campaign, the email type, whether it's in, whether you prefer to create an each HTML and text or just a text only email and for available for, so um, you can select the kinds of emails that the template can be used for, whether you want to use that as an autoresponder email, whether you want to use this template for list emails or uh, just a one-on-one emails, or you want to use this for your engagement program emails. So you have that option whether you, where you wanted this to be available. So once you click and And these are all the uh, layouts that Pardot has on their application. The bottom part 
of with the responsive title are the ones that I do recommend that you use because they do look great on both desktop and mobile. So these are the ones that you have to use Then I do recommend will make your um, email render um, seamlessly across devices. You also have an option if, if you want to skip it, then um, you can build your template from scratch. But these are these templates are all good if you want to just use the pre-made templates. So once you've um, selected your pre-made templates, just click apply. Apply. The main editor screen will appear, which includes um, the three tabs, which is the building, the testing, and the sending. And it kind of describes the whole process that we're doing here in uh, creating an email. So it involves building, it involves testing, and it, it involves sending. So let's discuss first the building tab. So here there is an editor and you use the editor to create and edit your email. This is where you edit your email, you modify your template. And in this section, the HTML, this is where you access the email source code to customize the content and styling of your template. So these are like this is like the more advanced option. And for the preview, if you want to see how your email appears in a prospect's inbox, then this is where you go. For the text one, the text tab, um, it allows you to review the text version of your email and change the formatting if necessary to make sure that the text only content looks good. And it's best practice to always include the text version of your email. The last part is the info and history. And on the info tab, this is where you'll be able to view and edit your subject line. Well, the history tab, this is where you find the autosave version of your email. Now, this one is a tab. So before, you final, before finalizing your email, send it to test list or individual email address to preview what recipients will see. So you have an option whether to send your um, email to a test list or whether you want to send it to an individual email. And right here, if your account has the advanced email analytics packet, you will be see how your message looks on different email clients, which is powered by us. So anything testing related, this is where you go. Next, and you use the sending tab to send an email force to a predefined list and also choose what not to send. You can also choose what, what that, who not to send the email to, which is the suppression list. And you can control the address, the custom reply to address. And then right here, right corner, the total mailable prospects whether to schedule your send or you immediately. So once you're done editing or testing the template that you created, you go ahead and click publish the template and your template will not will now be available for use. Only once you click publish the template will you be able to use that template that you made. When it comes to personalizing your email, if you want to make your email more personalized, then um, variable tags is one of the options that you can use or include in your email. So with variable tags, you can use content or data from your prospect records to kind of like personalize your emails. You can also use variable tags to insert centered information in your, in, into your email templates such as your company name and your address. And here are some of the examples of variable tags. 
as you can see, uh, you, each variable tag is uh, tied to a corresponding prospect field. On the right side, full of an individual prospect record. So variable tags are populated based on the field values found on the prospect record, which lets you create a more personalized email content. So your message would be like, hello, it could be like, hello, and then you insert the variable tag first name. So with that, if this is the prospect that you're going to send to, then Jesse will receive a more personalized email. Instead of another way to personalize your email is by using a dynamic content. And Parta also allows you to create dynamic content. So what dynamic content does is that it ensures subscribers receive messages that are targeted, that are targeted to their interests. Parta checks a prospect record for a like a specified value and then adjusts what the prospect sees. And the example right here, content variation is like based on is based on the custom field CRM system, and these are the available variations that for this example. You could actually uh, add up uh, up to twenty five variations of your dynamic content. Uh, we're going to share you some of the best practices when you're creating an email template. So for the general design, um, you design with tables. Most email clients don't support formatting with div tags, div tags. So we recommend using tables to actually structure your email templates. Uh, we also recommend you use inline styles and you specify formatting, meaning you include the font size, you include the font family and the color of the text. And then you should avoid Flash using Flash because most email clients like browser-based and desktop actually strip out Flash content. For the images, we recommend you limit images and you use alt, tag, alt tags. So Alt tags are like, um, alt tags display text when images don't load. And then you have to be also be specific about the size. You specify the height and the width of, for all images. Next is for the links. Uh, you use absolute URLs for all your emails, which means that you have to make sure that you include HTTPS in all your links. Uh, one also one thing also that you have to note is that you have to limit the number of links that you include in your email template because some spam filters consider emails with too many links to be a spam, and you don't want that to happen with your email um, emails. Next is hyperlink your links, and the last one is um, test test test, which means we encourage testing your templates. Um, we encourage you to like do a testing before um, finalizing it. You do it for multiple email clients because not all um, clients render HTML the same way. So in order to make sure that it works across your devices, you have to test it first. Now, if you want to learn um, here more and in the master class of like an email marketing specifically and learn all of the best practices in creating or implementing um, marketing, um, email marketing in Pardot, just leave us a comment and we want to hear it for you, from you. So right now, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. So Kevin is going to be discussing the form and form handlers. All right. Thank you, Kate. So let me just share my screen. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin. I am F Digital Salesforce developer. So I'll be discussing for you today how to set up forms and form handlers in Pardot. 
So let's get started. So the learning objectives and goal of this section is to dif differentiate what forms and form handlers are and how they are used in Pardot. You'll also learn how to build forms and form ha handlers on a step-by-step -step process. So Pardot offers two ways to collect visitor information and create identified prospects who visited your website. And these are forms and form handlers. So what's the difference between the two? You can design and manage Pardot forms using the form wizard, while you can also funnel data from external or existing forms on your website into Pardot with the use of a form handler. Through form and form handler, you can collect the visitor information such as the first name, the last name, email address, and the location. So basically, forms and form handlers are the one responsible for getting and capturing your prospects. The question is that when do we use form or form handler? It depends on your company since you may have different needs and certain requirements. So in order to know and to determine if you should use a form or a form handler, you need to ask yourself one question. Am I already collecting information on prospects elsewhere that I need to bring into Pardot? If the answer is yes, then you should use a form handler. This means if you have an existing and complex form structure that is already in place and you just want to pass those data back to Pardot from specific fields which are present on your existing forms and you don't want to make any changes to your lead generation strategy that might disrupt the work of your sales team, then you can use Pardot form handlers to collect the information that you need. But if the answer is no, then you should use a Pardot form. One good thing about the Pardot form is that you can use it for progressive profiling, meaning once your visitors converts already uh, to a prospect, you can continue to use forms to learn more about them, their needs, and their preferences. All right, so now we already differentiate what is form and form handlers. So now I will show to you a step-by-step -step process on creating a form in Pardot. The first step is to access the form in Pardot is to go to the content tab. Then on the left side menu, select and click forms. Then you will be able to land on, it, on the form page, then click the add form button. You will be prompted out by this screen and you will be uh, going first to the name tab section. In here, you need to fill up the part dot required information and fields. So first is the name field. This, is, this will be the name of your form. So best practice that you should use some naming conventions on naming your um, components in order for you to organize and track them easily in the future. You can also add some tags in here to help you categorize the items and the components. So you can add tags with one or multiple keywords, or you can also add phrases. So next one is the folders. For the folders, this is uh, the destination where you can locate and save your form. So you can find it after saving it. And then you just choose your uh, default uh, campaign for that specific form. Next tab is the fields tab section. So uh, please do take note that if you are creating a form in Pardot, your form will have the first name, the last name, the company, and email fields by default. So in here, you can add additional fields that you want uh, to be present on your form and what is needed based on your company requirements. For example, you can add the um, country or state fields right here. Just need to add this add new field and uh, select the field types. And you can also remove and delete fields on this section, but uh, please do take note that the email field is the only field that you can delete and will be always required. All right. So on the next tab is the look and feel tab section. 
in this section, you can customize and style your form's look and feel. And this is where you set up and create the user interface features of your form. So you can also use uh, some predefined layout template that Pardot offers, or you can create your own layout tem template from scratch. So these layout templates are a great solution if you want to enhance your form with styling options that are not available using the uh, default Pardot functionality. Okay, and the next tab is the completion actions tab section. So in here, you can customize and set your uh, form's thank you message content upon submission of the form. You can also um, create completion actions, which are actions that you want to happen when a prospect fills out the form. So one good example for this is if you want an action to send an email to those prospects once they submitted the form. So you can add that in the completion action section. All right, lastly, confirm and save tab. Uh, on this tab section, you will be able to see all the details that your form has, the name, the folder, the campaigns, the layout template, if you have selected any, the form fields that you have added, the submit text button, the uh, tags. Also, you will be able to see here um, a, a, the preview form link, which you can preview your form before saving it. And you just need to click the Confirm and Save button in order to successfully save your form in Pardot. All right. So um, you want to integrate now your uh, form into your uh, current website. So there are two ways you can host your form. First thing is uh, via Pardot landing page. Or second, and the second is place your form on your website. So if you are not using any Pardot landing page to host, to host your form, you can place the form on your website using an iframe. So how would you do that? So just navigate to the form record in Pardot and click the down arrow and select view HTML code from the drop down. You will be redirected and uh, with this HTML code will be shown. And just copy this iframe code and paste it into your web page source code. And that's it. That will automatically integrate uh, your um, website into Pardot using the form, using the Pardot form. All right. In terms of creating a form handler, it is almost the same as creating a form. The only difference that on the form handler, you won't be having the look and feel section where you style your form and select a layout template because on the form handler you will only have the name fields and completion actions available for you so also since on the form handler you will just need to add the fields that you want to map to bar dot from your existing forms right and that's it basically that's how you set up and create the form and form handlers in part dot Let's go ahead on our next agenda, which is uh, setting up landing pages. The learning objectives and goal of this section is to describe what a Pardot landing page is and when to use one, but also to learn how to build a landing page. So what is a landing page? A landing page is a specific web page that a visitor typically reaches after clicking a link or advertisement. These pages generally, generally display content that is specific to the advertisement, search keyword, or link click. So a landing page presents a streamlined path designed to elicit a specific action by the visitor prospect, whether it's giving their email address and converting to a prospect or registering for an upcoming event. So as you can see here, here are some landing pages and examples in Pardot that you can create. You can also host your Pardot forms inside your landing pages in Pardot. Oh, so Pardot Landing Page Builder helps you build your landing pages without uh, needing any uh, custom development or a web developer. How do you create an effective landing page? So there are five key elements 
these are the message, the layout, the CTA, the audience, and the continuum. So the first element is the message. The word that you put on your landing page are so important. This is where you tell your visitors why you're different, what action you want to take, and how to make that action. The second element is the layout. So it is essential for your landing page layout to include uh, some headlines, subtitles, or forms if if action is required them to submit information some bullet bullet points and some testimonials also known as your uh, social proof the next key element is the cta so cta stands for call to action so the cta uh, attract visitors to do to do the action so some example for this is um styling your um, button to use some standout colors and ensure the text color contrast from the uh, button itself the next key element is the audience it's worth reiterating that uh, landing pages have a specific cta aimed at a specific audience so ask the question where will the people who land on your landing page have come from do they come from uh, emails, advertising, or some social media? So you need to ensure the right people land on your landing page in the first place. And lastly, the continuum. So what should happen when someone clicks or lands on your landing page? What should happen next? So some options include um, adding display thank you message on your forms or on your landing page. So in summary, these elements will ensure that prospects are guided towards the call to actions you want to take them. And therefore, making part dot landing pages as, as an integral uh, part of your uh, lead generation strategy. All right. So now we already know what a landing page is. So now I will show you a step-by-step -step process on creating a landing page in part dot. So in order to navigate and access the landing page, first is click on the content tab. Then on the left side menu, select and click landing pages. And you will be landed on the landing pages page. Then click the add landing page button. You will be prompted out with this uh, screen. Under the name tab section, you need to fill up the part dot required field information and fields in order to create your landing page. So fill the name. So again, use uh, the best practice that you should use naming conventions or naming your components. And then again, you can also add tags to help you categorize them and select a folder destination where you can locate and save your landing page. You can also add some titles and description for your landing page asset and choose your default campaign. Next tab is the select form tab. In here, you can select if you would like to include a form on your landing page, as I discussed earlier regarding the form, you can host it via website or via a part dot landing page. So the next section is the content layout tab. Under this, Tab section, you can select if you would like your content to start from scratch and create your own customized layout. Or you can also select any stock templates that Pardot offers to preview Pardot's reformatted stock templates options, such as this content layouts, highlights with two columns, centered with three columns, and so on. The next tab is landing page content. Under the landing page content tab, you can set the main content of your landing page. You can, you can optimize your content for relevant keywords and formulate a clear call to action. And in here, you can begin to think about the look and feel of your landing page. And lastly, the confirm and save tab. Under the confirm and save tab, you will be able to see your landing page details before saving it the name of your landing page, the folder destination it is saved to, 
campaigns you selected, the title, the layout template if you created one, the form if you um, selected an existing form or did not, and the layout template, and if you have added some tags. Also in here, you can also preview your landing page before saving it. And in order to successfully save your landing page, you just need to click the confirm and save button. All right, so that's how basically you build a landing page in Pardot. So we now proceed to the last part of this session, is how to set up custom redirect. After completing this section, you'll be able to describe what a Pardot custom redirect is and how to build a custom redirect. So what is a custom redirect? Pardot's custom redirect allows you to track any link on your website or a third-party site. So for example, a link on your Twitter page or a banner ad on a third-party site. So Pardot has this ability to track any link anywhere so it doesn't have to be on your site. You can also add it on forums, LinkedIn, and even social media sites. Not only you can track click link activity, but you can also set up actions for the custom redirect. For example, uh, you can set up some actions for the prospect who click the link to adjust its score or to add some tags. So basically that's how custom redirect works. And now let's, you already know how, what a custom redirect is, and we can now proceed on a quick step-by-step -step process to create a custom redirect in Pardot. So the first step is to access the custom redirect is to click the content tab. Then on the left side menu, select and click custom redirects and you will be able to land on the custom redirect page, then click the add custom redirect button. So once you create a new custom redirect, you will be prompted out on this screen. So you need to fill up the part dot required information and fields. So first again is the name of your custom redirect and should use again some best practice on naming conventions, on naming your um, custom redirect and select the folder destination. Add some tags to help you categorize it and choose your default campaign. And as you can see here, you have the destination URL. So this destination URL, this is the location to which a visitor will be driven or redirected when they access the custom redirect link. So this destination can be a page of your own, a third party site, or maybe even a file. And also on customer redirect, as I said, you can set completion actions. So you can add actions that should happen when a prospect uh, click that link or customer direct. And as you can see, I have, you can adjust score of the prospect and add some tags. And after saving it, after saving your customer direct record, you will automatically land on the customer direct little page. So under the content section, you will see the details of the custom redirect record you created. So you'll see the name, the folder, the destination URL. So this destination URL is the one we set earlier, the URL link where they will be taken to or will be redirected to. And as you can see here, there's a generated link here or track URL. So this, this link is the one you can use and add to your website forums. And this is the one to take your visitors to that destination URL that we have set up. In our case, is the http.youtube.com. So you'll also see here a short URL. So in order to generate a short URL, you just click this generate link. It will automatically generate a short URL. So this short URL, you can use this on any social media post or site such as FB and Twitter. You will also see here the unique clicks. So this unique clicks tracks every unique click of prospects who click on your track URL. 
you also see here that total clicks so this total clicks tracks uh, the total clicks overall including prospects who click the url more than once we also see here the campaigns that you have selected and the tags that if you have added any and the completion actions and the uh, that you wanted to do whenever that url is clicked so basically that's it for creating custom redirect and pardot and also uh, that concludes our uh, pardot deep dive deep dive webinar session for today so if you have any questions feel free to let us know and put it on the uh, question box section All right, thank you, Kevin and Kate. So this is Karen once again. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot and it's a good thing we still have a little bit of time right now. So if you do have any questions, feel free to post them right now. Actually, I have one um, right at this moment. We have one from AJ Lahom. Is it possible to have a form where I can show or hide the next field based next field based on the value I initially selected. Okay, so this is for our form and form handlers. Can they show or hide the next field based on the value that they initially selected? Is this possible in Pardot? Um, yeah, that is possible. You can you can use uh, controlling fields, use controlling fields, so you can uh, have the parent field. Um, shown first and uh, if that uh, has a certain value selected you can show the child field okay thank you kevin hope that answers your question aj any other questions from our attendees today feel free to post them right now so while we're waiting for questions to come in i'm pretty sure a lot of you will have questions um, let me just remind you of the next session for our Perdot Essentials. So we've just finished the deep dive into the Perdot features. Um, and next week, it's going to be another interesting session with Deep. We will know how to automate our marketing programs. And I think this is very important now that we know how to navigate Perdot, now that we know the, the features. Now let's make our lives easier by automating our marketing programs. And that's what Zeke is going to discuss next week. Okay, so no more questions coming in. Um, while we're still waiting, we're going to give you a few more minutes. Maybe some of you are just typing or still absorbing what's been discussed today. Um, let me just let you know that we also have another masterclass ongoing. That's every Tuesday. It started yesterday. Um, and conducting it is our own CEO and co-founder, and he's also a six-time Salesforce certified um, professional. Robin Leonard is doing everything about CX architecture. So if you want to leverage on your technology and the customer experience to transform your businesses, this masterclass is for you. So yesterday he taught us all about how to create a CX architecture. And in the next few weeks, he will deep dive into how to leverage CX architecture to transform your business. This is every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Australian Standard Time. So that's around 11 a.m. if you're in the Philippines. Um, do register for it. Go to afdigital.com and the very first fold or the very first um, section that you'll see there in the landing page will be a link to register to our master classes. Okay, so I don't think any more question is coming in. Um, we can give back 10 minutes of our attendees time today so that we can end the session a little bit earlier. But Kate and Kevin, do you have anything else to add before we say goodbye? to our attendees. Um, um, I'm just thankful for those who attended. Thank you for giving your time and listening to our masterclass. If you have any questions, um, anything, 
really just let us know and maybe later on you'll have something maybe you could just let us know email us anything I think just to connect with question. us you can help Wait. us Sorry. oh there we have another question can i insert actual video in the email from divino Yes, you can. Actually, there is the connector that um, during the previous session we've discussed the different connectors that you can use and um, um, video is uh, one of that. Okay, thanks, Kate. Thank you for the question as well. Anyone else who wants to input their questions? Just keep on putting it Put inputting your questions. Um, Kate, yes, you were saying. Um, is that question um like including the video itself on the email? Um, if that is the question, if you include your like actual um YouTube channel in the email, then that is not actually possible, and we don't really recommend including a video um, inside your email. What we do recommend is if you want to include a video inside your email content is that you just do a screenshot of that um, YouTube channel or that video and just um, link that image to the destination of your um, of your video itself. Does that answer your question? Sorry, I got confused with the question. So I'm I'm changing my answer to the question. So the, the answer will be like, you can't, um, it's not best practice to include a video in the email content. So I guess what Kate is trying to say is that there's a connector, there's, it's possible, but it's not best practice, especially since, uh, you know, a lot of, um, email clients will block really heavy emails so as kate said best practice is to do a screenshot probably add a play button and then add the link to that instead so that it's that the email is light but you still are able to redirect them to an email uh, to a video is that correct kate kate Okay, so while we're waiting for Kate, we have another question here. Um, Shiala Michelle said she might have missed this, but can we embed the form into an email, like short survey, um, one to two questions? Um, to answer that question, forms are only, um, you can only integrate forms because if you create a form or form handler you will be having a generated endpoint URL so you can only add those endpoint URL to your um, websites or existing websites so I think it's not, uh, not possible to add in the email okay thanks Kevin in order to uh, um, integrate the part that, yeah AJ has another question. Would it be possible to have a survey on this unsubscribe page? like an additional um like an additional information that you want to get inside your unsubscribe page if that's the case then i think you just have to customize your unsubscribe page yeah i guess this is asked for purposes of knowing how why a subscriber is unsubscriber uh, unsubscribing to the page right so it's just all about customizing your unsubscribe page to be able to ask additional questions. Okay, thanks again, Kate and Kevin. Any other questions? Keep them coming, guys. We still have a few more minutes.
So I just want to clarify my answer a while ago. So when it comes to the video, um, the the connector that I was saying was that about to like if you want to measure the video engagement of your content, that's what I meant. Then you can do that with Pardot. So if you have a video in your website and you, if you want to um, like measure how engaging that video is, then that you could do that with Pardot with a connector. But with the uh, question whether you can include a video inside your email, then I do recommend my answer would be like include an image, put a link in that instead of uh, putting a whole video and adding a flash to that. Because again, flash would strip out your, um, it will be stripped out in your email content. Does that make sense, I think? Yes, it does. Thanks, Kate. Okay, we'll give you a few more seconds to type in those questions. Um, so just, just type them in and we'll get to them once they, um, once it appears on our end. So just, just to let you know, this session will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Um, that's AF Digital, that's the name of our YouTube channel. Um, please subscribe to it, click on the notification button so that you guys know once the video is available and so that it, in case you're also unable to um, attend any of our master classes or if you're interested in sharing it to your colleagues, you'll know right away when we have new content coming up. Because aside from these master classes, we also have our industry webinars. Um, we'll be doing, we'll be focusing on Philippine businesses this June, starting with retail on the 17th. Um, and we're doing a CX maturity assessment on the webinar, on the industry webinar session. So we do hope you could attend that or you could share it to your colleagues. Um, this is very useful, especially the CX maturity assessments part. Hey, we, we still have a few more minutes. Anything else you need to add, Kate or Kevin, uh, while we're waiting if others have questions and are just type, typing them in? Yeah, just to add to that question, if you can embed your forms on the email. So forms uh, and iframes. So you will be generated uh, the link right for the iframes you get. So those are aren't supported within within your emails, unfortunately, right now. So the, to answer that question, it is not possible. And if you have any other questions, just let us know. Okay, I think we're almost um, out of time. So just to wrap this up, thank you for everyone who attended the second session of the Pardot Essentials. And thank you for all those questions. Those are also very helpful um, for everyone who attended. Um, thank you, Kate and Kevin, for this very interesting session. And I do hope everybody who are in this call are able to attend another exciting session next week. That's Automate Your Marketing um pr programs with kevin with zeke sorry and again that's on wednesday um 12 o'clock philippine time that's 2 p.m australian standard time thank you everybody for attending please stay tuned to our youtube channel for the upload of this and see you again next week bye thank you thank you everyone bye Thank you everyone.